So I am not gonna start this with a negative. We're gonna start this with a positive before I give y'all an update or a recap of yesterday. So the positive, let me go outside, is this view. Can y'all see? I have a cute little swing patio set and I think it's too much light, hold on. So the resort is really beautiful. The ocean, you can hear it. Y'all may not be able to see it. I think the light is doing too much. First giving complete glory to God <clears throat> that I made it. Oh, hold on. Let me give y'all a little outfit check in the mirror. Today is a kimono day. I'm going to breakfast. Should have left my house about 30 45 minutes earlier i don't know who i thought i was i don't know why i thought leaving at 6 30 for an 8 30 flight was a good idea but because i was already packed i had a straight shot there's that left my blanket and my travel pillow had to go back and get that and I also forgot to leave some medicine for Dylan and leave my house key for my dad. Had to go give that. So now, me hitting the interstate at 6.30 a.m. really turned into like 6.45. Get to the airport. I did not do my due diligence. I needed an e-ticket in order to check in. I had to sit down, make or through the application for the e-ticket. That took 10 minutes. I go through TSA. My bag must have been full of a whole bunch of stuff that was questionable, because I did have extra batteries. I had all my, you know, recording stuff. TSA went smooth, but they held me for like an extra five minutes checking through my bag. Y'all will not believe that I went to the wrong gate because you know when you have a layover when you check in they give you tickets for both your first flight and then your layover I did not look at what ticket I was following or I was like I didn't pay attention to the destinations I just seen gate D7 so I'm walking to gate D7 that's the gate for my layover, not my original flight. So then I had to truck it to gate A4 on the opposite side. When I say I was the last person to board that plane, it is nothing but the grace 
that allowed me to make that flight. But I made it. And I made it to my layover, which was in Washington, D.C. And I was able to woosah off for a brief moment, got some coffee, got some breakfast. My second flight, top tier. It was a full flight except for the empty seat right next to me. If that ain't God's favor, and I had a window seat, and I had a very nice family surrounding me. It was 14 people in their party. And so my one ticket co-mingled inside of this family of 14. So they tee -hee hee'd with me and I followed them off the plane. We tee -hee hee'd through the custom line. So I didn't feel alone coming into the Dominican. Get to the Dominican and baby, these Dominican women, they got attitudes, baby. When I tell you attitudes, now I'm gonna give the lady at customs a little bit of grace. Maybe it had just been one of them type of mornings, but I'm standing waiting to come to my <clears throat> time to for her to check my passport. Hey, she tapping on the, like, like she couldn't speak. She could have said, Aki. She could have said, here. She tapping on the desk like, okay, attitude, no problem. Here go my stuff. Then as I am going through, they have to check your bags. Well, I only seen people putting actual luggage. Everybody else that had backpacks on their back. They didn't put their backpacks on the conveyor belt. They only put their actual big luggage. I seen five, six, seven different people walking through with their book bags still on their back. So sh I'm walking through. No, you bag now. Girl, ain't nobody trying to not give you my bag, but calm down, please. Hold on. <sighs> okay. So I kind of look at her and I'm looking at all these other people that are walking by. Just that quick, I done broke a sweat. And I get ready to keep on walking because I don't know that she's talking to me. You bag now. Oh, baby, the attitude. Okay, no problem. We do that now. After I get through the, let me take these glasses off so I can stop sweating for a second. We get through customs. I've already prepaid for my transportation from the airport to my resort. Tell me why. I did a shared shuttle, which I knew. I knew I was ordering a shared shuttle. But I guess in my mind, hold on y'all. I guess in my mind, it's not hot, hot, but it's humid. Ooh, sorry, anywho. I guess in my mind, Well, that's a neat feature. I don't know if y'all noticed I was going to turn my air up and apparently I didn't close my patio door all the way and my AC refused to cut on until I closed the door. Well, that's a good energy efficient feature. I like that. I need that in my house, baby. Because the way them kids be leaving them doors open like air is free. So anywho, so I knew I was doing a shared shuttle but I did not expect this shared shuttle to have so many different hotels. And if you've ever traveled to the Dominican or Mexico, the Dominican and all of their resorts remind me of how Mexico is set up. So you're driving down this main strip and all of the resorts are off that main strip. Like you got to turn on the side street and go on down off in the cut. If you've been to Mexico, you know what I'm talking about. The Dominican is very similar to me. And you can see, how can I say this nicely? I can only say it the way it is. The lower end resorts are closer to the airport. The higher end resorts, you gotta go on down. I had to go on down. So, <laughs> I was the last stop. But why did I wait for 30 minutes at the airport because they were waiting on two other passengers that had ordered, I guess, the same shuttle. And 
I was irritated by that because not only are the ladies in customs talking crazy to me, but now I'm sitting on this shuttle, but I'm like, at least it's air. I pulled my book out, waited for 30 minutes. Nonetheless, I Google or I put my hotel in Google Maps. It's 33 minute drive, but we got three stops before you hit my resort. I was on that shuttle for an hour. Going back home, I'm going to order a private transportation. It's going to be worth it. Take me straight there. And with the fiasco that I had getting to the airport at BNA, I'm going to give myself extra time getting back to the airport here because I ain't got no time to be missing no flights, okay? Now, once I get to my resort, I am absolutely blown away. The lobby is beautiful. The resort is beautiful. But it takes them another 30 minutes to check me in they cannot get uh they got my confirmation everything is paid but for some reason their systems are running slow i understand they can't control that i decide to upgrade from just regular access to full access to the adult only side so they can't get my band to activate he can't find key card he can't find this he can't 30 minutes at the checkout check in and then I go outside and there's a shuttle that is going to take me to my actual room. I ain't lying. I waited 28 minutes. I counted it. Because at this point, I'm so irritated that I am literally counting down the minutes. And I am watching multiple, they call them bellboys. I'm watching multiple bellboys come in, go out, come in, go out. I'm watching three, four shuttles come in, you know, like the, the big golf carts, basically. Why I can't get on one of them? And y'all already took my bag, y'all already tagged my bag, but tell me why when it's time for me to get on the shuttle, he puts my bag on the shuttle, but then he picks up like four or five resort employees, the people who work here. And so he keep making stops, keep making stops, which I'm not tripping, but is this an employee shuttle or is this a guest shuttle? Maybe I'm sounding a little entitled, but at this point, I have been up because I could not sleep Saturday night, Friday morning, Saturday morning, Friday night, Saturday morning. I couldn't sleep. So I've been up since three o'clock and that's not their fault. I, that's not their fault. But at this point, it's 730. I'm exhausted. I have been on multiple planes. I done had to run through the airport. I ain't ate, I'm getting hangry. Please get me to my room. And he pulls to the building. Now, maybe again, entitlement, but you ain't gonna walk me to my door, especially the first time. Now I could understand if this was just a regular day. Like I done been here two, three days. I know where I'm going. He tee hee he in with the homies. Oh, oh. You're building eight, just to hit the elevator to the third floor, enjoy. I said, you're not gonna, before I could even finish my sentence, I was like, bet. I see you manana tomorrow, you. So I went to bed last night very frustrated because remember the whole point of me doing a solo trip was to increase my confidence, boost my self-esteem, start feeling more capable because with all the things that have been happening in my life here recently, I've been really questioning myself. I also needed a break. I needed a break from life period. I wanted to come and literally reset, refresh, relax, and not have to worry about anything. And for my travel, and again, it was my fault. I take full accountability for not doing my due diligence. Oh my gosh. Now that I'm looking at these plugs, let me show y'all these plugs. Let me show y'all these plugs. Hold on one second. I've never been to the Dominican before. I fully take accountability for not doing my due diligence. I see that these are regular USB ports. I see that, cool. I don't have nothing that's USB. Why would I look at this and think that that's supposed to fit any kind of outlet? I mean, or plug that I have. I get ready to plug my stuff in, I see this, and I'm like, okay, maybe I just need an adapter. Maybe they have one up at the front desk. Maybe I just need to call and, and get an adapter. We don't have an adapter. Tell me why I'm in this hotel room last night, boohoo crying. Because 
I'm frustrated about me not knowing about the e-ticket. I'm frustrated that I went to the wrong gate. I'm frustrated that I waited on the shuttle for so long and I had to travel for so long on the shuttle. I'm frustrated that they couldn't get me checked in. I'm frustrated that y'all are taking forever to get me to my hotel room. I'm frustrated because I'm hungry. I need a drink. I need, I'm frustrated. And then I tell myself, okay, you know what, Ash? I'm just going to plug in my laptop. I'm going to watch this new Tyler Perry movie and I'm going to relax. And then I'll get up tomorrow and start again. I can't watch the Tyler Perry movie because it's not available in the Dominican Republic. And I can't do nothing on my laptop because when I try to plug it into that plug back there, this plug don't, this ain't the plug I need. And I distinctly remember one of my clients asking me, oh, that's wonderful. You're going to the DR. I hope you enjoy. Do you need a converter or an adapter for your outlets? And I'm like, I'm sure I don't. Right? But I never looked it up. I never Googled it. I never checked it. So here's what I definitely have taken from that because y'all know I believe there's a lesson in everything. Going forward, I will make sure. Matter of fact, hold on, let, let me sit down. So what I learned from traveling so far as a solo traveler, especially internationally, I will always do my due diligence. I will double, triple, quadruple check to make sure that I have everything required to travel out of the country before it gets too late. I have no excuse. I can only blame myself. Nobody else is responsible. And I had people ask me, do you need a visa? Do you need a converter? Do you need this? And if I had just taken 2.5 seconds to Google, what do I need to travel to the DR? I could have avoided the stress of the e-ticket situation. I could have avoided the stress of the outlet situation. So that's on me, 1000%. And although last night when I was getting in the bed, I was frustrated and crying, but now I realize this is exactly what I needed to happen because I was, I'm doing this trip to boost my confidence and my capability. Some lessons are bought and some lessons are taught. And some lessons are just gonna make you cry. It is what it is. So going forward, I know that I need to always do my due diligence. That's, that's one. <clears throat> Two, I need to gain a lot more patience with myself and I need to gain more patience with others because I, things are not always in our control. And for the things that I could not control, for the things that the other people couldn't control, instead of me getting frustrated from it, I should have taken a deep breath, relaxed, and woosaw it. So I need to work on my patience. But number three, the biggest thing is I need to learn to speak up more. I am not a confrontational type person. I'm gonna handle my business and I'm not gonna let you do me too bad. You know, you can't obviously be disrespecting me, but the bellhop situation and waiting on that shuttle that long, I should have said something or waiting to get back to my hotel room that long. I should have said something because had I said something, I think they would have gotten on top of it much quicker. Um, and then I wouldn't have been so frustrated with that. So I need to learn to speak up for myself and me asking for what I need does not make me a bad person. I definitely took that from last night. Me asking for what I need does not make me a bad person because some people may just enjoy sitting and waiting. I was ready to go to my room. I needed to eat, I needed to relax. So I can't be super upset that I didn't let these people know what I needed. So that's my take on the first <laughs> day of travel, um, traveling internationally by myself. And I'm gonna say this too. Some may agree, some may not agree. Y'all know that there's a man who may or may not like me. Mm -hmm. That man likes me and I like him. The way that people treat you when you have a man around you that don't play behind you is totally different and I want that and need that in my life. I know for a fact 
based on how people respond to us when we are out and about on a date or just wherever the type of respect that just his presence demands i know that people would not play with me like that with him i still need to know how to do it on my own but i say that to say that i greatly appreciate having the covering of a good man in my life i enjoy my space i enjoy doing the things that i like to do and I cannot say that I wouldn't travel solo again. I'm not gonna say that. But I will say that I am excited to have the protection and the direction of a good man in my life. Can anybody else relate to that? Because the way this man, and I, I gotta think of a name for him. Y'all don't even know his real name, but let's call him the chef. I'm gonna coin him the chef because that's what he does. The way that the chef demands respect without even saying a word, just his presence. I know if he was here, number one, the moment he seen me becoming frustrated, he would have he would have nipped that in the bud immediately. And the way that he does not play about people disrespecting me or me not being in the best position, he would all of that baby would have been nipped in the bud. So there is something to appreciate. There's a lot to appreciate about having a good man in your life. There is absolutely nothing wrong with being a single woman and still having a thriving and successful life as a single woman. I'm here for it. I am it. I, I'm here for it. It is a necessity. And I do not believe that your life should stop just because you don't have a man in your life. However, being single is the necessity. Being married and covered and protected by a man who loves you is the goal. Am I alone in that? Can anybody else agree? If you agree, leave a comment. The goal is to have a successful, happy life as a individual so that when you meet your person and you combine your happy, successful life with their happy, successful life and you put it together, y'all have an incredible, happy, successful life as two that have now united as one. So baby, I want to marry. I want to get married. And I want a good husband. And I want a man who, uh-uh, let me call my husband and see what he say. I, I want it. I'm going, uh -uh, let me ask my husband y'all to death. Please believe, okay? So with all that being said, I got up this morning, I saw it, I prayed, I thanked God for a beautiful view. Like, how can you be mad, Ashley? Get your life together, okay? So what I'm about to do is put on my swimming suit. I have to use this card to go and get a beach towel. And then I'm gonna go lay by the beach for the rest of the day or a good majority of the day. Um, I think based on the weather, let me see. The weather down here tomorrow, let me double check to make sure I'm correct. Yeah, so can y'all see? So we've got clouds, there you go. It's 86 degrees right now. And the high today is supposed to be 91, completely sunny. But tomorrow, Monday, the high is 89 with 35%. Tuesday, that did have clouds in it. So Tuesday, I'm back to 90. So maybe I can go back to the beach Tuesday as well. But Tuesday is my actual birthday. So Tuesday, I fully intend on getting a massage. That reminds me I need to book that. I fully intend on getting a massage and doing a nice dinner Tuesday night. Um, yeah, so let me go take full advantage of this sun while it is out. And I will, let me get down to the beach. I really don't want to take this camera to the beach, y'all. So what I'm going to do is take my phone and try to remember to record long ways so I can put some footage of me laid out by the beach, okay? But I'm not taking this phone, I mean this camera. 
something happened to this camera, I would be sick, okay? But, uh, yeah. So I'll see y'all in a minute. I'm 